Right, so this is my Cruson buffing and polishing machine. Um, it's a professional polishing machine, very expensive to buy new. Um, I got this one second hand for a really good price. And this is a one speed um, machine and it runs at 3000 RPM. But today I'd like to show you a small polishing machine which I've just got, um, which is variable speed. So this is the one, it's called a Bench Grinder TM-2 adjustable speed, 220 volts and 350 watts. And it's 0 to 10,000 RPM. And when I first saw these online, I um, checked out the um, reviews that you do underneath the tools and things. And it had very good write-up, so I knew it would be um, uh, something good. When I got it, I was really surprised at the quality. Um, this section down here is um, cast metal, I think it's aluminium. And um, the top, obviously the motor part here, is, is really good high quality um, plastic with metal ends. It looks really well built and the shaft going through it is 8mm and not only did I want it for polishing I thought well it'd be good uh, for actually driving the uh, flexible shafts they do show a picture of it on the uh, box um, but it doesn't actually come with a um, flexible shaft so I bought one separately and made up an adapter to fit the end which is really easy to do and I'll show you how I um, did that later so the machine comes with various bits and pieces. It has um, two ends to take the actual uh, buffing or polishing wheels. Uh, one is a left hand um, tapered thread and one is a right hand. Obviously you have to get them on the um, right sides so that the wheels don't fly off. Um, it has some abrasive wheels. Um, a felt wheel here which I use for polishing and um, this wheel here which I use uh, with my ordinary um, buffing compound. Plus it also comes with um, the allen key and uh, a couple of screws to actually fix it to a wooden surface, a bench or a piece of wood like I've done here and spare brushes for the motor. And on the underside of the unit has uh, four rubber feet, but like they um, say in the um, manual here, it is best to actually screw it to um, a wooden surface or a bench. Um, like I say, they prov provide these two screws here, but that's not enough. There should have been a screw hole at the back. Uh, what I've done here is um, I've got a couple of uh, corner brackets that go in the modern um, kitchen units and various things like that and made those to fit. There's a couple of um, screw holes um, that are on the side of the polishing base here and um, I think these were obviously uh, put in there um, when it was manufactured so they're probably manufacturing um, thread holes and um, I, like I said I've just screwed a four millimeter um, screw into one of those and then just secured that um, bracket to the wood with a couple of self-tapping screws. Um, this is how I do a lot of my um, machinery or small machines in the workshop. Um, because I'm very limited for room, I screw a piece of wood on there with um, self-tapping screws and then it can just sit in the vise and you can actually um, tighten it up and it's rock solid um, for whenever you use it. And being in the vise it's at a nice uh, working height and um, obviously when I finish with it just take it out and put it away. So the 8mm spindle has a flat on either side and these are the two mandrels for holding the um, polishing wheels or the buffing wheels. One is a left hand thread, obviously it goes on the left side, and one is the normal right hand thread for the right side. And it's uh, important that you get those round the right way or the wheels won't grip. And then just tighten the two um, grub screws down onto the um, flats on the spindle there.
and in the instruction manual it said that they're marked left and right but mine um, didn't have any markings at all for those that are new to buffing machines uh, and these type of mandrels if you want to find out um, they're on the correct side you get a ruler and stick the corner of the ruler um, in the thread turn the spindle in the normal rotation which is forward like that if the ruler is carried up the um, actual mandrel like it is there and screwing towards the um, buffing machine um, then it's correct and obviously you do the same this side remember to go forward on the spindle and that one's screwing up the thread as well and that's most important all the wheels won't stay on in use so in the kit you get four different wheels, um, two abrasive wheels, um, you get a felt polishing wheel and a um, buffing wheel and this is the stitched type which is really good. They're made in the USA these wheels are and they're three inches in diameter by half inch wide. And obviously you can choose what side you have the polisher on and the buffing wheel. I put them with the uh, writing um, on the outside. So just screw that one on like that. When they, the machine starts up, um, it will actually uh, go up the mandrel a bit and lock into position. And the machine has a good um, power cable length and it comes with this type of plug here. In the UK we use these adapters and it has a fuse in the um, back there. The machine has um, an on off switch here and then on the potentiometer there's a switch there as well which turns it on and off. So when you switch it on here the power light should come on here and when you turn it on with the speed control or the potentiometer the blue light lights up and then you have a speed um, starting with this one here up to full speed And it does say on there to please adjust the um, speed slowly and smoothly. And I've noticed with a lot of um, Chinese machines, um, they say 0 to 10,000. In the instructions it says uh, 0 to 8,000 or whatever. Um, but that's uh, not really the case uh, because when you actually turn it on here and check it with a RPM gauge, it's running at 2,860 on the starting speed. And there's actually um, nothing wrong with that because the intended use is a polishing machine which run at high speed anyway. Um, I'm going to use it obviously for my flexible drive and my tool post drill on the lathe. And I have tried it already and it works really well for that because it's a good powered motor. So with um, buffing you can actually uh, use an abrasive compound um, to actually take off um, burrs on metal, polishing and generally tidying up um, tools, uh, clean off rust or whatever. And over the years I've used um, many different uh, types of compound. Um, I don't use any uh, grease based ones now, I only used water based uh, compound. Uh, which is a sateen compound and I'll give the uh, link where you can actually um, buy this on eBay um, below. And the reason I only use this one is um, you can actually just buy it in half blocks uh, from the seller. Um, there's three different grades and um, you can actually use it um, when cleaning up brass or metal for welding or soldering and because it hasn't got a grease base um, you can actually go straight to soldering or welding without any further cleaning so after um, 30 odd years of engineering i actually think this is the um, best compound you can actually buy 
The only downside it has is uh, once it's opened, um, it has a tendency of drying out, um, especially if you leave it for some hours. So what I do is put it in a sealed container like this after use, and that keeps it all um, really nice for use uh, when you come to use it next. You have to be careful as well that you don't get it too hot. If you put it in the sun, it would actually melt. Um, if that did happen, um, which it has um, in my experience, just leave it um, in a cool place and it'll reset so um, nothing's wasted. And um, like I say, a nice screw top um, uh, food container like this one here will keep it in perfect condition, ready for use. So to uh, apply the um, buffing compound to the actual wheel, you start the machine first and then put a bit of pressure on it and you'll see it um, head up the wheel uh, like that. And when you've applied the uh, buffing compound, don't go straight in with a piece of metal and start buffing because you'll strip the um, buffing compound off very quickly. Just give it half a minute to set. And for those that are new to um, buffing and polishing, that's because um, this type of um, compound is applied by friction. It melts the surface and is carried onto the wheel. And you just need those few seconds for the uh, buffing compound to go cold and set again. Also, remember to wear safety goggles. You can wear a um, face mask as well so you don't breathe the dust or use an extractor or a fan to blow the dust away. Um, just be careful you don't breathe it in. It can cause um, quite a bit of irritation. And when you come to um, use the machine, make sure that you have um, edges pointing downwards when you apply it to the wheel. If you have it up like that, it will snatch it um, out of your hand and probably uh, fly it all around the shed. Um, like I said, it's really high speed and you have to be careful how you actually um, use it. Like I say, with sharp edges or whatever, always point down and um, the wheel will just push it downwards and it won't actually snatch. So I've got a piece of brass here, um, darkened brass, and it's got a rough sawn edge and I'll just show you the uh, performance of the machine. So you can see there straight away that it's taken the burr off this side and there's some um, still ragged edges from where that's been sawn with a quite a burr on the edge there. And that takes it off um, straight away and that's some um, 180 grit. With the same compound, um, you can actually use it for um, taking off burrs like this, or you can actually use it to clean up metal. So they're really excellent little machines for taking off um, burrs like I've shown very quickly, um, polishing things up, taking scratches out and bringing things up to a, a mirror finish in a matter of um, minutes. And like I say, you can clean brass up for soldering or steel for welding or brazing. And like I say, if you use this compound, you won't have to use anything like acetone or whatever. Um, and you can go straight into that. Um, if you haven't got a um, buffing machine like this and then you get one, you'll actually wonder why or wonder how um, you actually got away without using one. And on the uh, felt wheel, I use a, a green co polishing compound, which is just uh, really good. Um, and that um, brings things up to a mirror finish. Um, you can get all this sort of stuff on eBay.
and just a few seconds on that polishing wheel with that compound and um, bring this piece of brass up to a beautiful finish on the front here you can see the difference between the two and that's done within a matter of seconds and I find these um, buffing wheels um, exceptional for actually uh, deburring threads as well, particularly if you saw a bolt off or whatever, just clean the end up on a disc sander or whatever, and then just go on the edge and spin the bolt or thread on the end of that one. And that will take off all the burrs around the um, front of the thread. So now I'll show you the um, flexi shaft um, set up. Just take this um, end off for that one to go on. And like I say, I think they um, do a dedicated um, shaft for this um, actual polisher because uh, it shows it in the picture here. Um, that's the one with the uh, plastic flexi shaft. But I actually um, prefer these high quality uh, metal uh, flexible shafts with the aluminium um, drill holder and the six millimeter chuck. And this one has a 10 millimeter thread adapter um, here to go on another power tool. I'll put links below um, where you can actually get these. And I've made an adapter just to go on the end here and this one will just screw straight onto that and then I can actually use it um, just like a normal um, die grinder or um, Dremel type tool plus I can actually use it on my lathe for a uh, tool post drill so the adapter I've made to go on the end here is made out of a piece of aircraft grade aluminium and I've drilled it obviously for 8mm, do a um, pilot drill first so the 8mm drill cuts the size and it fits on there nice and um, tight. And then I've got a 6mm grub screw in this uh, flange diameter here, I've left that um, quite big so that there's plenty of thread to screw down. And then in this end here, I've drilled and tapped it out for a 10 millimeter thread, cut off the end of a bolt, um, stuck that in there with Loctite 638. That one just goes onto the shaft like that, nice tight fit like I say, and then just tighten the um, 6 millimeter grub screw down onto the flap. And then I just put a nylon 10 millimeter washer on there so that the um, when the uh, adapter screws down onto that um, I can actually unscrew it easily if I want to in the future or you can use a fiber one. The only thing when making these um, make sure that you have it um, running as true as possible within a thou um, from end to end so do all the drilling uh, right the way through with the 8 millimeter drill um, first. So when you turn it around to do the um, threaded end here and bore that out or drill that out and um, tap it, um, that thread will run nice and true uh, within the, the adapter. And obviously you have to have it um, running pretty true because the um, polisher is running at a very high speed and anything out of true would make um, it vibrate a bit. So then the shaft screws onto that one. And it's all ready to go. And on these um, flexible shafts, it's most important to actually lubricate them first before you use them. You undo this um, grub screw at the front here. That allows this piece to come out and then you um, sight through the hole, the larger hole at the back for the um, grub screw, undo that one and then it will actually pull out from there, um, take the actual um, drill piece off the end, it's just a push fit and then you can actually pull this right the way out and I put um, a molybdenum disulfide um, grease on that one 
um, all the way up you take the actual shaft right the way out and um, put one end in a vise and hold the other end and just use your hand and put plenty of um, grease uh, within the spring that's on the diameter and then that one will run really nice and smooth when you put these back on to the um, shaft you have to find um, the position for that tab to go in so first you uh, feel for that uh, when you actually feel that click into the um, position you just push it home and it clicks into place on the uh, ball groove that ball sits in that ball groove and locks it on the end of the flexi shaft and then put the um, flat um, on the end of the internal part of the flexi shaft um, sight that down first get the um, grub screw in position in that um, access hole put the um, shaft into that and when it's held in position like that lock the uh, grub screw down onto the um, flap And then remember to lock the front one as well. And just check it runs smooth by hand first. And this actual uh, flexi shaft comes with this nice handled key. You have to use it in this um, U part on the actual handle of the uh, drill. Otherwise the teeth of the key clash with the end of the actual housing there. And with this one you can actually tighten that up nice and tight. This is a really good tool here, it's called a flap wheel. Great for deburring and cleaning out scratches or whatever. It's emery tape type um, material and they're really good to um, get for all different types of things. So now I have it set up to power the tool post drill on my Chinese mini lathe. This is the fixture I made the other day and I had um, the drill powered by the Hilda die grinder then. And that was a good setup. But this is another good setup now. And I'm going to use my 24 hole indexing system on the back pulley here to machine equally spaced holes around this aluminium component.
So there you can see it's brilliant for that purpose as well. And because this adapter is designed for this one, you can just remove it by undoing the six millimeter grub screw and then just pulling it off. And it's also quick and easy to remove from the vise and put away so the polisher doesn't permanently take up any space in the workshop.